guys, I am Pixel Dan, and today I've got a special early look for you because the awesome folks over at Boss Fight Studios sent me a pre production sample of their first deluxe figure in the Bucky O'Hare toy line. It's Bruiser the Berserker Baboon. I have been a huge fan of what Boss Fight has done with the Bucky O'Hare license, and Bruiser has been one that has been very exciting for me ever since he was announced. Like I said, he's the first deluxe figure in the line, so this is the biggest, most beefiest, bulkiest figure we've seen yet from Boss Fight in the Bucky O'Hare series. And it's really cool that we're getting this early look. So since this is a pre-production sample, uh, you'll notice that he is not in his packaging. The figure just came to me loose. Um, this is almost final. So there's gonna be a few minor things on here that I'll point out as we're looking at it that will be slightly tweaked for the final figure, which is on pre-order right now and is almost ready to go. It's scheduled to ship here in the fourth quarter of 2019. So let's go ahead and dive right in and get a good look at this guy. So I don't know if you can tell because my hands are in here, which gives you an idea of just how big this figure is. Let's bring in the tape measure. So you can see in the pose he's in right now, his legs are of course squat, he's got a hunched back, he is a baboon after all, right? But you can see that the figure stands at the six inch height, um, width wise, look at this, if we go on his arms there, that's another six inches across, just from elbow to elbow there. Um, if we bring in Bucky, Look at this, look at the size difference here. So this is the boss fight Bucky O'Hare standing alongside Bruiser, the Berserker Baboon. It's amazing. I was really impressed with the overall size and scale of this guy, just how big and chunky he is. He's amazing. And holy cow, this guy's got some serious weight to him. Like he feels really good and really, really solid. Uh, the details on him are <laughs> absolutely Fantastic. So once again, Boss Fight nailed the overall sculpted details because he looks incredible. Does a great job of capturing the look of the character uh, as he appeared in the original uh, comic strips, of course, um, or the artwork that we saw and the packaging, you know, for the original toys. It's absolutely amazing. So many colors on here with the paint apps. I love how nice and shiny the silver looks on like the spikes and you can see the wraps kind of going across his arms there uh, on the legs there as well. Nice, bright, vibrant reds. Uh, the gold on the collar, the spiked collar around his neck there. Everything looks fantastic. Of course, he got that, that great chain, you know, going from the pierced nose to the pierced ear. Uh, he is incredible. I mean, the overall sculpt of details are really, really fantastic on this guy. You can see the nice fur in the uh, sculpt of uh, his body there, which is really, really great. Um, so let's talk about articulation with this guy. Let me go ahead and zoom out just a little bit, just so we can see how this guy functions. So this is what you can expect with Bruiser here. That head is ball jointed like all of the figures, but of course, since he's in that baboon pose, he's got the kind of bigger hunched back. So his head is sticking out a little more frontwards there. Uh, you can see it still rolls all the way around, but mostly you're gonna get like kind of that pivot, that side to side pivot there with the head sculpt. You do have nice hinge joints there at the shoulders. So the arms can go outwards. They can move forwards and backwards. You got the swivels at the elbow. You got bends at the elbow, which are real tight on this guy there. You've also got the swivels at the wrists there, which are very nice. You can see the torso rolls all the way around. You can swivel left to right there as well. And we've also got it in the waist. Nice articulation at the waist there. You got those ball joints at the thighs. So legs can go outwards, forwards, backwards, good range of motion. You got the swivels at the knee there. You can also bend at the knee. Um, they mostly just bend down. See, you can notice that he doesn't straighten his legs all the way out, but of course uh, that's because he's got that, you know, baboon stance. Um, I love the knee pads there as well, part of the sculpt. It looks really, really good. And you can see the nice ball joints there at the ankles. Uh, so the hinges allow the feet to move forwards and backwards, and then you can rock them side to side. So one of the things that Boss Fight wanted to let me know, one of the things that they are still tweaking for the final is they are tightening up the joints here at the hips uh, and the ankles. The hips and the ankles are just a little loose on this guy. He's a very heavy figure, so those do need to be just a little bit tighter. You can see I'm standing him pretty well for the most part, but he does kind of buckle under his own weight in certain poses, so you just gotta find the right way to balance uh, the version that I have here. And he does stand up, and but that's a good thing. They know that that's one of the things that they've got to fix before the final figure comes out. So they wanted to let me know that they are gonna be tweaking that so that those will be tightened up. 
The other thing on here that I got to point out is you'll notice that the silvered paint doesn't completely cover the hinge joint on the right shoulder. This is something else they told me is going to be fixed. Some of the paint is going to be tightened up, cleaned up a little bit. So this right here should be fully painted. I noticed that it's fully painted on the bottom. So I almost wondered if it was like upside down, uh, but they assured me that the final figure will have this kind of fixed. Um, so this is just one of those, you know, things that you see on these pre-production figures. Uh, and that's why they have those. So they can figure out the small little details that need to be fixed for the final figure. So that's really cool. Um, all in all, he looks fantastic. He feels really good. The articulation's really, really nice on this guy. So he does come with a few accessories as well as some interchangeable parts. Um, He's got a couple of swappable hands. So right now he's kind of got like a open grip in his left hand and he's got a closed fist. We can also swap onto the gripping right hand and the open left hand. And this is very easy to do, just like with the other figures in this line. All you gotta do is kind of pop the wrist out by giving it a nice tug. These are actually very, very tight joints here, you'll notice. Come on, come on, come on. Boom, just like that, okay. So we got that wrist pulled out. We can pop the new one in its place. One of the things I want to point out, man, these spikes, they're super sharp. They're so pointy. And when you're changing the, uh, <laughs> changing the hands, they actually really poke you. So be careful with that. All right, so we got the nice open hand there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and swap out the fist over here so we can also put the gripping hand in for his blaster accessory. So the open hand is great because his hands and arms are big and long enough that you can get him in a pose like a, a nice three point stance. You can get his uh, open hand kind of on the ground if you wanna get some cool poses like that. And it works out really, really well. And then we've got his blaster here as well, which is done in a nice shiny silver color. Uh, it's just molded in that color plastic it looks like. It's a nice kind of light plastic, but it's very rigid, very hard plastic. Um, that right gripping hand that we just put on is the best hand for this blaster. He holds onto it really, really nicely. Now, he does have have the little hole in there for like a trigger finger and you notice he's got a little bit of a trigger finger on there I was able to get the finger in there with a little bit of work, but he just doesn't quite hold on to the gun that well. Um, but he still holds on to it really good if you don't put the finger in the trigger hole. So um, he can hold on to the gun just fine. It just doesn't work quite as well as I was hoping it would uh, with the finger actually going through the trigger slot there. Uh, one of the things, of course, just like with the vintage toy line, uh, it does have the little hole on the gun itself, and he's got these little pegs all over his belt. So you can plug this onto those little holes there, or the little peg holes uh, on the belt so that he can holster his gun on there, which is really cool. That's, that's one of the neat things that comes straight off the vintage toy line that they kept for the modern figures. I thought that was really cool. Uh, we've also got an interchangeable head, and this is fantastic. It's like this big, wide open mouth, almost looks like he's smiling, it's fantastic. So again, the head is on a ball joint. You just gotta pop it right off. You can see the nice ball joint right there, very cool. And then we can take the new head and we can pop it on in its place. It's gotta give it a nice firm press. Boom, just like that. And now we've got this new head, which is fantastic. Like I said, he almost looks like he's smiling and that head goes perfect with the banana accessory. That's right, we got a tiny little banana here as well, which you can hold onto in either of the gripping hands, and you can get some fantastic poses of Bruiser looking very happy about to chow down on a banana. I love it. All right, guys, it's comparison time. So how about we bring in that vintage Bruiser action figure from Hasbro Toys, just so you can see the two standing side by side, and holy cow, the difference here is amazing. One of the things that is so incredible to me about the Boss Fight Bucky figures is you look at them, and they almost look like what you remember the vintage toys looking like. It's not until you put them side by side that you really see how incredible the update sculpts are on these new figures. It's really amazing looking at these two figures side by side. And of course, Pudding Bruiser with the rest of the Boss Fight Bucky team is quite the sight to behold. I love the way this crew is shaping up. It looks great. We gotta get a Willie DeWitt in here, but otherwise this is looking really, really incredible. So there you go, my friends. There is your early look 
at Bruiser, the Berserker Baboon, the first deluxe figure in Boss Fight Studios' Bucky O'Hare toy line. Like I said, this is available for pre-order right now. I will put the link in the description of this video if you guys want to check it out for yourself. It should be shipping very, very soon. Once again, huge, massive thanks to the folks over at Boss Fight for sending along this pre-production sample so we can get a good look at it outside of the packaging so we know exactly what to expect. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button, leave me a comment to let me know what you think, and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, my friends.